Laser sights will make you a more accurate and confident shooter by providing visual feedback on sight alignment and trigger control. Crimson Trace, making laser sight standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. He rode out of Louisiana territory, and with his gun slung low and his microphone held high, he brought truth to a savage land. And the legend grew. Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. All right, welcome back. Tom Gresham here. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in, or just just call Tom Talk Gun. It's easier, honestly. I don't know. I can't remember all the numbers. <laughs> Tom Talk Gun, I can remember that. You can dial that one. Uh, let's see. Frank has done exactly that, calling me uh, out of Montana. Frank, you're on Gun Talk. Frank? Frank put down his phone. He went to get a sandwich. You there, Frank? On one? Okay. All right. That's the way it goes. Tell you what, put it back on hold. When he comes back, we'll see if we can get him back in. It happens. You get on hold. You get, yeah, well, I'll just go over here. And then you come back and go, what happened? That's all right. Tell you what let's do. Let's uh, get in. Uh, Justin Carroll is joining us right now. He is the Revolver Guy at RevolverGuy.com. Hey, Justin, how are you doing, man? Hey, Tom. Good. How are you? Excellent. I always love to talk revolvers and shooting anything, honestly. <laughs> you and me both. That's, that makes two of us. So how did you come up with the whole RevolverGuy.com idea anyway? Well, um, I, uh, it, it just so happened I had to, uh, because of where I was living at the time, had to make a little bit of a shift in the handguns I was uh, owning and carrying and whatever. So uh, revolvers are pretty much universally legal, and I, I realized pretty quickly I didn't know the really the first thing about them. So oh. that led me in that direction. I found a dearth of information on the internet about revolvers so here we are interesting uh, i'm wondering when you're saying that i'm just thinking you may have a generation maybe even two generations of people who have grown up not knowing anything or much about revolvers i would not disagree with that at all and had it not just been for this random circumstance where some, a light bulb went off in my brain that said revolvers is the answer I probably still wouldn't know a thing about revolvers myself. Were you shooting semi-autos up, up until that point? I was, yeah. I carried 1911s in the military. I carried Glocks uh, for some organizations I worked for after the military. So that's what I was using in my personal life. And um, revolvers seemed to make sense for, you know, kind of the legal situation that uh, mm-hmm. or the state that I was in at the time. So, sure. Yeah. All right, so what was your biggest epiphany when you started really getting into revolvers, being a, a guy that seriously shot semi-autos, the good ones, really knew what he was doing with them, you know, knew how to shoot pistols, and now you're shooting this old-fashioned, ancient uh, kind of handgun? <laughs> uh, well, this has definitely been an arc, and the thing that I keep coming back to is you can absolutely make a revolver work. You can be extremely good with it, but making it work is a lot of work. Finding holster support and speed loader support there's some amazing revolvers out there, like the Kimber K6, and uh, I'm really excited about the stuff that's coming out from Colt, which we're going to be reviewing soon. Mm-hmm. But the aftermarket is just not as motivated to ca- keep up with those things sure. as they are the, the the new semi-auto hotness. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking. You want to tell people? At least, you know, I would want to tell them. You can do anything with the revolver. You can do with a semi-auto. You have to master an additional set of skills to do that, though. Do you think that's fair? I think you have to master some additional skills, uh, like reloading is much more complicated Mm -hmm. and tricky. But there's also a set of skills you don't need, like malfunction clearances, all the type 1, type 2, et cetera. You don't really need with a revolver, yeah. And and for those who say, yeah, but those are slow, I say, well, I got two words for you. Jerry Michelik. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I've, I've been working with revolvers hot and heavy for uh, about three or four years now, and still nowhere close to that, but I'm working on it. I'm, I'm, that's my goal. The other thing is, there's a role for revolvers, even if you are a semi-auto uh, person, guy or gal, there are certain situations where a revolver actually has some serious advantages, don't you think? I definitely uh, agree with you there. If you need an exceptionally large caliber for animal defense, predator defense, Mm -hmm. if you need a gun for potentially contact distance shots where you're actually, you know, your gun may be in physical contact with someone who's 
presenting a deadly force threat to you. Right. You don't have the reciprocating slide. Um, they're very neglect tolerant. So ankle holster guns tend to revolvers tend to hold up really, really well in that role. Yeah, there's definitely some cases that they do the job better than anything else out there. You know, it's interesting. We're we're talking, and I'm literally looking at the Fox News website right now, and there is a video there that somebody shot of a postal worker in Detroit getting attacked by what appears to be a pit bull. I mean, seriously attacked. And people are trying to pound on him with boxes and sticks and all. I'm thinking, man, if ever there was a place where carrying a gun makes sense, and people say, well, I live in a good part of town. Yeah, you have dogs. They're out, they're everywhere. Stuff happens. But, you know, that's one of those places where, and I'm going to get into, into the weeds on this one, but a revolver, there's an advantage there because if you have to make a contact shot where with a semi-auto, you can actually shove the gun out of battery. You can force the slide back a little bit if you have to shove it into something or someone. And it actually literally will not go off if you do that. Whereas a revolver, that's not an option. It's not going to happen. Absolutely. And, yeah, you can knock the gun out of battery by pushing the slide back just a fraction of an inch. Or you you may get one shot and something may foul the return of the slide Mm -hmm. in a successful second shot. Yeah, revolvers excel in that role. Also, from shooting inside of a purse or a man bag or anything like that, with a revolver, you can just shoot and shoot and shoot with it never having to take it out of the bag. Whereas with a semi-auto, there's a pretty decent shot. You're going to get one shot, then it's going to foul. You've got to take it out and do your malfunction drill. It's just, And this is all stuff we work on at the range, but it's just things that people don't think about. Definitely. And in, in the cold weather environment where I live, a coat pocket is a great place to put a revolver. Ah. Uh, keep, your, keep your hand on it. I don't have to mm-hmm. dig through four layers to get to my appendix holster. Uh, yeah, there definitely are some great use cases for revolvers even today. Mm-hmm. Pro tip for those who want to do that, if you have the revolver in your coat pocket, you can, if you need to, shoot through your coat pocket. But one thing I would advise is, if at all possible, try to shove your coat pocket in front of you as much as you can to get that gun away from you. Uh, but you can certainly you can shoot and keep shooting right there if you've got somebody on top of you right there. You never have to take it out of the pocket. Absolutely. Yeah. And even if you have time to get it out of the pocket, your hands can already be on it, which is you know, step one of your of your draw stroke. So it's it's very speedy. How about uh, maintenance tips? Anything that people need to know about uh, revolvers that they might not normally be aware of? Oh, boy. Uh, keep the dirt out from under your extractor star. That can uh, that can stop you up really quickly. Mm. If you're shooting a Smith & Wesson revolver or a revolver where that ejector rod screws out, uh, make sure that thing's tightened up. That's jammed me up at the range a couple times mm. with a couple different guns. Um, if that thing comes unscrewed a tiny bit, maybe mm-hmm. half a turn, uh, it's hard to get the cylinder back out and, and Banging it back out may damage the ejector rod, so you don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, revolvers are not the ultimately reliable gun that I think we tend to see a lot of media indicating that they right. are. Uh, very neglect tolerant, not super abuse tolerant. They're they're fairly uh, complicated machines. Oh, yeah. And please, 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 if you really want to look like an idiot, uh, push forward or pull back on that cylinder release and then flip your wrist so that the cylinder goes banging out. That's a cool <laughs> look for the movies, but it actually does damage your gun. And, yeah, it does make you look like an idiot. I, I think you're supposed to load the cylinder, spin it, and then flip it closed <laughs> while it's still spinning. Thank I'm you. I'd forgotten that part of the pro tip. <laughs> yes. Yeah. God. <laughs> no, just seriously, don't do that. Please. <laughs> yeah, you know, you press it open. The other thing is, um, if you're if you're shooting right-handed, for instance, I, I, people kind of fumble around with loading. I say, look, let me show you. You got the gun in your right hand. You open the cylinder. You press it with your thumb or pull it back with your thumb, depending on the latch. And then with your left hand, put the whole gun in your left hand. Hold it like up, coming up from the bottom. P- push the cylinder out with your thumb, the left hand. Hold the gun in your left hand and do the loading with your right hand. And then when you're ready to close it, you simply have your fingers that are underneath the gun push the cylinder back in to the frame. It's really simple once you figure it out. It is. And I'm I'm a big proponent of the, well, 
I'll say the universal revolver reload works really well for me, and that does involve switching it to the left hand, reloading at the right. And then once that cylinder's closed, you're holding it in the left hand with the with the butt of the gun just perfectly presented in front of you to reacquire mm-hmm. that grip and, and get back to work. Um, could not agree more with that, although some people prefer the – you know the reload techniques where you reload with the weekend. It's it's not. I I agree with you. It's it's not for me. And and, and frankly, and now the, what I'm describing is uh, more of a single loading, not using a uh, speed loader because that I'm, I am not accomplished at the speed loader. <laughs> Actually, that's a great technique for single loading too, because you drop you, your your left hand when it's cradling the revolver creates a perfect little tray to drop those five or six rounds in. Just pick them up one at a time and drop them into a chamber until ah. until it's full and uh, close it and go back to work. Sounds good. Look, if people want to know more about what you're up to, how do they uh, follow you and what do they what do they do? Uh, you can uh, go to my blog revolverguy.com or you can listen to my podcast at acrossthepeak.com. Nothing to do with revolver specifically, but. Uh, all the stuff your dad should have taught you kind of thing. <laughs> I like it. Justin, thanks so much. <laughs> Love talking revolvers, man. Thank you. All right, you take care. 866-TALK-GUN. Are you a revolver guy or gal? How long has it been since you shot a revolver? Or are you one of those people that, who actually has never shot a revolver? Let me know. Just call me at Tom Talk Gun. Laser sights enhance and maintain your accuracy in a time of crisis. Whether you're unbalanced, evading a threat, or engaging from behind cover, a laser sight aids in keeping you on target. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge, and learn more about why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. This land, once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like, what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, where the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. It's the next generation target pistol, the SW-22 Victory from Smith & Wesson. Stainless steel frame, interchangeable match barrel, thumb safety, fiber optic sights, and a Picatinny rail. The SW-22 Victory is ready for anything, targets or small game. Also available with a threaded barrel or cryptic camo finish. And it's backed by the Smith & Wesson Lifetime Service Policy. Learn more about the SW-22 Victory at smith-wesson.com. This is interesting. The NRA, in its magazine, uh, American Rifleman, has an article. It's all about how the Democrats are targeting the NRA and what they're doing attacking the NRA. All right. So we've got that. So you've got this double truck. That's a two-page picture of Chuck and Nancy. Not Nancy Pelosi. Or, I'm sorry, it's uh, Nancy and uh, Gabby Giffords. So it's Nancy Pelosi and Gabby Giffords in this picture, Right. And they talk about how the article is all about how the Democrats are targeting the NRA. And the title of the article is Target Practice. Okay. Except that there have been several of the gun ban leaders and several Democratic Congress folk who have put out tweets about this of, this is horrible. The NRA is, is basically calling for the murder 
of Nancy Pelosi and Gabby Giffords have their picture and says, Target Practice. When reading even the first paragraph would have shown that's not what this article is about. And so now I just, as we're on the air, get this uh, email, because I'm on the, all the list, from the Giffords gun band group. That's Gabby Giffords gun band group. Oh, yeah, by the way, her husband is running for Senate in Arizona. Yeah. Uh, Senator House, I forget. Pardon me. Um, the Giffords mailing says, the NRA has gone too far again. That starts off. Pick up a copy of their latest magazine, and you'll see this. A picture of Nancy Pelosi and Gabby next to the bolded headline, Target Practice. So already they've set it up that the NRA is saying that we should use Gabby Giffords and Nancy Pelosi for target practice. And then in their mailing it says, here's the truth. It doesn't matter how they meant it. They've surrendered the benefit of the doubt at this point. In other words, we don't care if that's not what the article is about. We don't care if it's about something completely different altogether. We can say it's about anything we want. We can say they're calling for the murder of these people, even though we know it's not true because they're the NRA. And then it says, of course, make a $3 donation to Gifford's pack. <laughs> God. How dishonest is that? Oh, my gosh. Line five, Rick's with us out of uh, Salem, Illinois. Rick, you're on Gun Talk. What's happening? Well, I wanted to give you a little update on some of the uh, laws. You know, you've been talking about Oregon. I'd like to talk about Illinois. Mm -hmm. And I did attend a town hall. There were two state reps there and a state senator, all conservative, all pro-gun. Okay. Um, And as you know, we have to have a firearm owner's ID card in right. Illinois, and one of the laws that they're trying to pass, it's HBL 88, they want us to agree to allow them to search our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram sites, and then they'll determine from that whether or not we're worthy of owning a gun. That's right. They want to be able to scan your social media. And of course, yes. I tell them, look, that's fine, but let's do this. So we'll do a test run. For the next two years, anybody who wants to run for public office has to submit all of their information about all their social media act, uh, activism, and we'll be able to review that. And they go, what? Oh, yeah, well, you, you want to do it to one of the uh, amendments? Let's do it to all of them. I, I was able to give a, a, a little bit of testimony. It, it was kind of unorganized, but it was an excellent, excellent town hall. Don't get me wrong. But mm-hmm. I did talk, talk a little bit about uh, House Bill 107, which basically outlaws the so-called assault, assault gun, right. I suggested that legislators uh, educate themselves that it it really doesn't mean uh, assault rifle, automatic reaming, or apoplectic, apoplectic ruin or anything like that. <laughs> and Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> How'd that go over? Um, they were conservative. Now, there was 200 people there, and there was about, we talked about all kinds of different stuff. It wasn't just about guns but we, we almost had we had to interrupt towards the end to get anything in it, they're, they're very pro-gun people at least okay. i got that impression you know, and that's the thing people don't understand if they're not there that most of illinois is actually fairly conservative once again you've got a large metropolitan center that uh carries the weight of that population and kind of skews the whole state this is absolutely correct and in fact many of the democrats down here are more uh, in the Kennedy era type Democrats, and my county I live in went went for Trump. Mm. Uh, I talked a little bit about you know the, the defin- how how they define an assault gun, and I used the example of an 870 Remington and a Mossberg 500. Mm-hmm. You know they're used to breach doors by the military. Could that be considered a military style or assault weapon? <laughs> um, yeah, that that uh, that got some applause. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's some other stuff. This a uh, ten round bill. Uh, the, the assault rifle, by the way, would outlaw a Marlin Model 60 semi-automatic because it holds 15 rounds in the tube of 22 rimfire. Yes, mm-hmm. it would mm-hmm. also outlaw uh, a Smith and Wesson 22A. That's a ten round magazine. Anything that's plus one. Okay. 
Okay. So you put a, one in the chamber, you put another one there, you've got an 11-round pistol so, so what they for squirrel hunting. So all these guns that are made with 10 rounds to comply with these other states, now in Illinois, if you could put 10 in the magazine and have one in the chamber, then that would disqualify it. Yeah, in the the going back to the 870 and the Mossberg, uh, <laughs> if you get some of those real short uh, rounds, they'll sure. hold 10 or more. Yeah, the Aguila mini shells, and then you put an uh, extended mag on it. Uh, all of a sudden, your shotgun, of course, can hold more than 10, and here we go. No, it's, and you know yeah. what? You're, you're right to point all that out because they never think about that stuff. And you're thinking, but let me explain how this is going to actually work. It's kind of like that universal background check where they said, well, we didn't understand that that was going to make it impossible to loan your gun to your brother-in-law for the weekend. That would be a crime. And then when he gave it back to you at the end of the weekend, if you, you took it back without doing a background check with the FBI involved, then that would be another crime. We, we never intended that. Yeah, but that's what the law is. That's what you passed. The, the left has for a long time trying to get something in central Minnesota and anchor. They've got pretty much the West Coast and, and much of the East Coast, and they're looking for either Illinois or Minnesota, and I think Illinois is going to fall next. Mm. Uh, we've lost 45,000 people in this state. I used to work at a gun range. I stress, stress used to. They sold out and moved to Missouri. We are losing small gun shops right and left. We have to, The state licenses now small gun shops. It's not enough that the feds do it. The oh. state has to do it. I feel, and I go, go, go quickly. I'm just almost out of time. Yeah, I, I feel like they did that just to get rid of the small guys. Yeah, well, absolutely. And there, there's a plan underway. And it's, uh, I've been detailing that. I'm just kind of, for those who don't know, I put it out in the newsletter last week. If you, if you didn't catch it, you know, the details of what their plan is. Nancy Pelosi said we're going to declare a national emergency about guns. I said, well, you know, how are you going to do that? Well, we have the, auto, the universal background check, which outlaws private sales. And then they have a bill in Congress that says we're going to do away with the protections that say that you can get a gun after three days if the NICS check is not denied. So if they have those two, then when they could declare the national emergency, they say no NICS checks at all. That means no gun sales at all. Honey, does this holster make me look fat? The right answers to the tough questions on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Back with you here. Let's go straight to the phones. Line four, Scott's with us. Uh, hey, Scott, thanks for calling. Hi. Um, I thought I'd give you some information. Um, we were listening earlier, and we heard, you know, everything's taking place in Oregon and in Washington, too. And I'm loaded, located in Lewiston, Idaho, which is directly across the river, of course, from right. Oregon, Washington, and um, that's ATK. This is supposedly the biggest, biggest gun town in the United States. Now, I don't know if that's correct or not, but that's what they tell us. This is <laughs> okay. the most pro-gun town in the United States. All right. So um, my wife and I, we own quarter-minute magnums, and we build high-end custom rifles, oh. um, just a few a year, you know, 20, 30 a year. Mm -hmm. And um, we were appalled of how many of our customers were not NRA members. And so we made a decision that we were no longer going to sell a rifle unless to a person unless they were an NRA member. And if they weren't, we also offered to go ahead and buy them a membership. Okay. Now, that was a hard decision to make at the time we made it. Well, that was a year and a half ago, and it's continuing to be harder. It has cut our business by 50%. Well, what happens, 50%. When, you, what happens when you tell somebody of your policy do they say, well, I'm not going to pay the 35 bucks, or even not, I'm not going to let you buy me the membership? I'm just not going to be, be a member? Yes, and, and this is, this is it, it's just almost sickening. What they say is, I don't want my name on a list. Oh, that and, old and thing. I almost, yes, and I almost freak out when they say it. I, I, I almost can't stand it. Well, like what? They don't have a driver's license. They're not registered to vote. Your name is on lists everywhere. And yet they do not want to join the NRA. And so we simply won't sell them a gun. And and, and, and it, it becomes a sticking point. And like I said, it, it's hurt our business 50%. But we're going to ride this out to the end. It'll either bankrupt us or it'll turn around. And I don't know which is going to happen. But I, I just thought you might be interested in, in that information. Do you have a website? Yes, we do. Quarter Minute Magnums. QuarterMinuteMagnums.com. I'm clicking on it right now. Okay, here's the deal. Um, man, I like it. I like what you're doing. You're, you're building uh, rifles 
chamber for magnums that actually shoot well. A lot of people say you can't get a, a magnum rifle to shoot well, and obviously you can if you know what you're doing, if you know how to build a good rifle. Absolutely, and part of that process is, too, you just stick with it. In other words, just because you build a gun, you take it out and you shoot it. If it shoots half inch but you want it to shoot quarter inch, well, guess what? You pull off that barrel, you throw it in the trash can, and you redo it. Yeah, I remember a conversation my dad had with Kenny Jarrett many years ago, and uh, dad wanted a 7-millimeter uh, Remington mag and a Kenny Jarrett rifle. Of course, Kenny builds great rifles. They're super accurate. Kenny said, well, you know, we can't get a 7 mag to shoot well. And dad said, well, that's what I want. He said, okay, I'll try it. And he worked out. He said, well, well, what ammo do you want? He said, well, I want uh, nozzle partitions. He goes, oh, my gosh, we can't get partitions to shoot well. You know, that's just not going to work. When he's done, I mean, this thing is shooting about a point three with 160-grain, 7-millimeter uh, nozzle partition bullets. Obviously, with the uh, accurate bullets, it's even you know better than that. So they absolutely will do it. All right, let me get this out again. It's quarterminutemagnums.com. If you want a really good shooting magnum rifle, go check these guys out, and we'll see if we can drive some business your way. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to make a drive from Cascade up to see you guys at some point. We're going to chat, okay? That would be absolutely excellent. We would love to meet you. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate the call, sir. You take care. All right, here what we're going to do. We're going to bring in Jim right now, and then we'll probably have to go to a break quickly. But I'm going to bring in my, my good friend and a really keen observer of the firearms industry as a whole and kind of the political process, Jim Shepard from the Shooting Wire, the Outdoor Wire, and all the other wires he puts out. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fine. Good deal. I, I can't I, shoot a quarter minute, but you know. <laughs> well, I, I can shoot a quarter inch. I just got to get close. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh. Now I understand that the difference between a quarter inch and a quarter minute is it's all about what the distance is. I, I get that. So those are going. Well, that's not exactly like a quarter minute. Yeah, I know. Jim and I understand that. Did, did you happen to catch? Not, you know. did, did you happen to? Were you able to listen in on the interview I did with the benchmade guy? No, I was not. Okay, was you've, been, you've been following this Benchmade story. <laughs> yeah, okay, you've been following this Benchmade story. You know what I'd like to do? To give us some time, I want to take a quick break here because I want to come back and let's talk about what happens on the Internet and how companies are responding and how they should respond. And this is from uh, Jim Shepard, who is a veteran of the mainstream media. Been there, done that, and can help out. We'll be right back with more Gun Talk. For more than 70 years, Timney Triggers has been enhancing the shooter's experience. Whether it's a local competition, a day at the range, or even the hunt of a lifetime. Setting the standard in aftermarket triggers, Timney is now producing more than 170 models of triggers for bolt-action rifles, shotguns, AR rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Proudly made in the USA since 1946. Find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. Tired of searching the web for the best deals on guns, ammunition, and gear? Download the free Gun Dealio app today for deals and discounts right at your fingertips. Handguns, rifles, shotguns, ammo, optics, lasers, gun safes, targets, gun cleaners, grips, slings, and much, much more. Save money on products you want from the companies you love. New deals, discounts, and rebates added daily. Gun Dealio, available for free in the App Store and Google Play. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. All right, we're talking with Jim Shepard from the Shooting Wire, the Outdoor Wire, the Burning Wire, the Tactical Wire, and all the other wires he does. If you're not uh, getting these in your email box, shame on you because you're missing out on tons of information. Uh, you know, we have, a lot of us inside the industry depend upon what Jim puts out. It's all the news of what's going on, new products, who's moving, who's doing what. And also, Jim, you are a keen observer of the political process, and I should just go ahead and tell people I'm going to out you right here. You were You were one of the very first employees at CNN. 
badge number seven. Badge number seven. So you were employee number seven at CNM, and uh, yeah, and so, I don't know who the other five were. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know Ted was first, right? No, no. Yeah, Ted never had a badge. Oh. He stayed out of the newsroom, and that was part of the deal. He never had a CNN badge. Smart. Okay, good deal. All right, but you you have been an observer a of this. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a, a, an observer of this for a long time. And we're looking at this Benchmade knife blow up on the web, and we've seen it with our friend Jim Zumbo, what happened there. It's happened to other people. This is a new day and age where um, you and I have talked about this privately. Unfortunately, it seems a lot easier to energize gun folks to go eat their own than it is to get them to go fight the gun banners. It absolutely is because everyone's – looking for something I don't know exactly what they're looking for Tom but but some people are just looking to be irritated about something now issues don't interest them flashpoints mm-hmm. interest them they mm-hmm. want to get mad about something and you can't get mad about something that's factually based but if you put a picture out with no context the way the <laughs> the Oregon City Police Department did mm-hmm. from bench made whenever I got hot when I saw it sure and uh, and I'm not one of those flash point people. I'm not, you know, sitting out there looking for something to be irritated about. But it was out there, and the problem today is once it's there, it's there forever. You yeah. cannot walk something back. You know, and honestly, I understand. They're saying, hey, the police came to us and said, can you guys cut these things down a little bit so we can put them in shipping boxes to send them to the place that destroys them? And they go, yeah, sure, we got the tools here. we just cut them up for you. We're helping out the cops. Got it. That, and that's, I'm sure that's all the conversation that took place, never thinking that this is going to be some massive blow-up on the web. And then they get caught. Unfortunately, I, I would offer, I don't think they handled it all that well. <laughs> I would say they handled it pitifully, yeah. but to, well, in in the in the large picture, I'd say that it could have been handled differently. I'm glad I don't have to handle it because it's easier to critique it than True. to do it. But let me say, to their credit, they did not take down their social media comment sections. They took the beating on Facebook. They, t- I mean, every one of their social media places yeah. just lit up. Wednesday night, my phone just exploded off the nightstand. And by the time I went to check the website, they had almost a thousand comments, and none of them were character references. <laughs> you know, they were all, I'm very angry, and you can say that however you want to. There were people that said things, and here's one of the problems you can say anything you want to when people can't punch you in the snout for it. Yes, it's easy and uh, online. And, look, yeah, and I don't want people to think that I'm... I'm anonymously. I'm, yeah, and I don't want people to think that I am anti benchmade If you listen real carefully, that's the sound of my benchmade knife. That's my everyday carry knife that I've carried for years. So, I mean, you know, I think they make good products and all that. At the same time... However. <laughs> yes. <laughs> However. <laughs> they, they, they passed a bridge too far. They did, I like didn't bench they? made products. Yeah. I, I like bench made people. But I do not like the fact that time after time after time, it gets pointed out that while most gun people are knife people, not many knife people are really gun people when it comes down to it. And they yeah. don't understand their audience. They're yeah. customers. And I had to go through the drill with uh, Matt from Benchmade because he's talking about, well, you know, we're supporting the Interstate uh, Transportation Act. I said, you know, that's a bad bill. And I don't, yeah, I don't know is, that he was really versed bill. on it. It's a terrible bill. I mean, the Interstate Transport Act, and they say, well, this will protect knife owners. No, actually it won't. It'll trick knife owners into thinking that they're protected. Then they'll go get themselves arrested the same way that happens in New Jersey and New York with gun owners who think that the Firearms Owners Protection Act protects them. When it doesn't, you can go spend a year in jail there because the ba- that bill is so bad, that law is so bad. And they want to do the exact same thing to knife owners. I mean, I, I had to school him as quickly as I could within this venue. That, that's a terrible bill. No, oh, it's, it's an abysmal bill drawn up in a, in a half-baked manner and then put out there. It's an eyewash bill. It's a PR bill. It's not well, anything you, that's helpful. You, you know, if they had to take the word knife out of the title to get Democrats to, to vote for it, then they had to keep 
dumbing it down and watering it down to the point where uh, Diane Feinstein approves of it, we have a problem. Yeah, we, you know, if she votes for it, I'm against it pretty much in principle anyway. And pretty that much sounds terrible for, for somebody to, you know, that's been in the news business for nearly, nearly 50 years to come out against somebody just because of where they stand. Well, yeah, unfortunately, the lines are almost that tightly drawn in the sand. People don't understand that there's an asymmetric war going on, and guess what? We're the objective. What do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is they're not fighting. We're coming after you, and we want to regulate you out of business, so we're going to make you turn in your guns. No, they're going to make your life so miserable that you might even think about turning in your guns. I There is a pitched battle going on right now in the in the financial world. The business world is more where I look than the political mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. Right now there is a concerted effort to go on, going on to shut gun companies out of the equities markets, to cut money availability off. If they starve them to death, the small ones, the independent ones that where the innovation and a lot of the good stuff come from, will be the first to go. If you don't have capital to pay for your production, you're out of business. And, and, if you don't this, have access to money, if you can't process a credit card, if you can't take anything mm-hmm. except cash or a check, you're not in business today. And this is happening behind the scenes. People don't know what's going on. There are very powerful people asking for and getting meetings with the AIGs of the world, with the, the big banks, the big financial groups, the investment groups. And basically saying, hey, we need to talk with you because as part of your socially responsible uh, outlook, you need not be doing business with gun companies. I mean, am I right? This is what's going on? You're absolutely right. And, you know, in the last three weeks, Ruger and Smith & Wesson both had to do what I call, you know, book reports because activist investors led by the uh, 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 a group of nuns out mm-hmm. of the West Coast, which I call the Sisters of Perpetual Misery, <laughs> will not stop going to these meetings and, and preaching, We, you need to do more about gun safety, you need to do more about smart guns. And they go in and they go to the equity groups and they get on them and say, look, you know, our retirement fund has a half a billion dollars invested with you and you're going to vote for mm-hmm. them to do this book report. Mm. And guess what? They do the book report. And I think Smith and & Wesson and Ruger got some unjustified criticism the other day because mm-hmm. people said, well, you know, a majority of shareholders. No, it was not a majority of shareholders who voted for it. It was a majority of qualified shareholders. If you own 10% of Smith & Wesson's stock, you're in charge. Hmm. In, in, as far as the equities market goes, because nobody else has a chunk that big. Right. So you're a majority of qualified voters. Now, the two groups, Fidelity and I, the name of the other one slips me, which means I'm not giving them their due. One of the two companies voted for the book report, where it wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and that's how it happens. Jim, hold on a second. I want to talk a little bit more about this and kind of where the threats are, because I think we're looking at threats in all directions at the moment. And I I honestly think uh, Pelosi tipped her hand when she talked about this national emergency, declaring a national emergency. Like I say, the, the process is simple. You get the universal background check, so you stop the private sale of guns. It has to go through a dealer. And then you pass this H.R. 1112, which says that removes the protections that we have where you can buy a gun if you're not denied in three days so they can delay it as long as they want and then they declare a national emergency and they say you know what no background checks for six months everybody goes out of business we're talking to jim shepherd he is the creator of the shooting wire the tactical wire the outdoor wire Jim, I'm going to switch on you a little bit. You get to, because of you know the nature of your work, you get to go play with cool guns now and then, get to go out and do some stuff. In the last uh, six months to a year, any particular guns that stand out where you go, okay, that was kind of fun, or that was cool, or wow, these guys are doing something interesting? 
you know, it's funny, you were saying that. I was listening during the commercial break to some of these things, and I thought, you know, I've seen some neat new stuff this year. Yeah. I think the one that I've had the most fun with is Mossberg's little concealed carry pistol. It's nice, isn't it? I, uh, I, it's really nice. It's it's a flat trigger, and I've always been a flat trigger freak. And uh, it it has a nice action. It's a very clean lined little gun. There's not a lot of not a lot of uh, fancy pantsy about it. It's just right. a little gun that shoots great. Mm-hmm. And um, I took my normal carry gun, which is all tricked up with an apex trigger and big sights and all of those things that people like me need everything except the honesty of a white stick because I can't see very well. <laughs> and um, shot the same drill, one gun into the holster, the other gun out, and mm. shot a better score twice with the Mossberg. Really? With the inexpensive it just, Mossberg. Just fit, it just fit my hand. It wow. felt good, shot good. Once in a while, that happens. Like, it drives me crazy. I've got all these really neat guns. <laughs> yeah, you think, and, I've got all this money into this other one, and this one out of the box, brand new and inexpensive uh, defensive gun from Mossberg, and I shoot it better. Holy cow. Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's it's um, usually the nut behind the bolt that causes the mental True. errors. But, you know, it just, it just worked that way. And I've had fun. I've done something that you told me I should do for years. In the last month or so, I've done a lot of shotgun shooting. Uh huh. And I've been shooting um, Remington's new, I guess it's a Versa Max V3, whatever that is. I've oh, that's, that is nice. That it's quick. Well, you know what they did? And they basically trimmed it up to the point where, I swear to God, it feels like an old Remington Model 1100, which is one of the better handling uh, semi autos ever made. Yes, it, it does. That's exactly what it feels like to me. And it's faster and clean, and I was running one with a, uh, I, I went to a sporting clay benefit thing, you know, mm-hmm. and I hate sporting clays, you know that, because I'm terrible at it. I broke the first 12 targets. I've never broken 12 in a row of anything except dishes. <laughs> you should have called it quits at that point and just gone home. Yeah, well, I pretty much did, because Jim showed up. <laughs> but it was a pretty good first impression to clean the first two stations. And I guess. On, and I'm like, well. And the funny part was, it was a loner gun from the Nashville Gun Club. I'd never had it in my hand before I stepped to the stand. I didn't know what ammo we were shooting, and I hadn't seen the station. I showed up late. So just like, wow, well, this is fun. Well, you know, so, we are in the, this is the golden age of gun making. We have more cool guns now than have ever existed. If you want to buy a gun, the prices are right, and the stuff is amazing these days, right? Oh, I mean, you can't find a gun today that doesn't shoot as well as some of the custom guns from just 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous the way the barrels and the triggers and, and uh, the actions and everything, they've just gotten it right. Well, yeah, when and you can get a, a $350 Savage or Ruger American that's out there shooting half-inch groups, it's just amazing. Jim Shepard, look, i, I got to kick you out of here. The shooting wire, the outdoor wire, uh, they, you can just look them up. I'm just telling people, you need to subscribe, you need to get the email. You're just doing super stuff. Hey. All right, let's you take care, Jim good old friend. He's been there, done that. Appreciate that. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. Let me know what you're thinking when we come back. We're going to be talking to one of the best shooters on the planet about a really cool new load for the 300 Blackout. This one really turned my head, I got to tell you.